Welcome back everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you're having good luck with your gardening and all of your projects. And without further ado, let's get to today's project. So as you can see, we got done framing the inside of the container and installing the outlets. And then we added some supports. And then uh, we spray foamed all the walls as you can see here. Oh, oh, you want to see what it looks like on the inside? Oh, okay. We could do that. Sorry about the mess. It's a construction site. I think they all look like this for a while. All right, here we go. Here's the here's the kit that I bought. I wasn't real happy with it because uh, one of the cans runs out a long time before the other one, so you get a lot of sticky orange crap that comes out at the end. And these are expensive. I bought three of these. I took three to insulate, insulate all three walls. So it's, it's, in, it's about a half inch to one inch thick. Maybe a little thicker in some areas. I had never done something like this before, so there's a little bit of a learning curve. It is a DIY kit, so I guess my best advice to you guys would be read the instructions, make sure, make darn sure these are these nuts are tight onto the valve. So uh, there's a reason why I know that because I didn't double check. You know, the first one I double checked, it was tight. The, th the second one I didn't. As soon as I turned the valve on, it started spraying out all over the place and wasted a bunch. But that being said, we did use three whole kits, and we got what is this? 30, 32 feet by eight feet all the way down one side. And then we've got the end all done on the bottom and towards the top. We're not gonna do the ceiling yet because I wanna weld on a bunch of brackets on the outside for the carport. And uh, in order to do that safely, we can't, uh, <laughs> we can't have insulation up there because that would probably catch on fire. No bueno. So uh, the reason why I haven't done it yet is because my computer is on the fritz. Our uh, charger for our laptop doesn't work anymore. So I'm waiting on a new one because that's got all the CNC programming stuff on it. Uh, my desktop doesn't have that kind of stuff on it. You can see that it hardens really, really quickly. This was done a couple of hours ago and it's, you know, it's solid as a rock already. Uh, this is where I finished. And as you can see what, what I mentioned, that one of the canisters ran out of uh, mix before the other one did. And I got this orange sticky gooey stuff that ran down because I was I was at the end of the wall obviously in the corner here and I was trying to fill the corners up. Um, I did it earlier pretty good so I think we'll be all right but it made a god awful mess. But we'll, uh, we'll address that tomorrow. I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Maybe we'll get a scraper or something. Looks like it did foam up so maybe we'll be able to just peel that off. But I did put Obviously, I put paper down on the floor before I started. And I covered up anything that I didn't want to get expanding foam on because this stuff was messy. I was obviously using a whole painter's suit right there. Had my full face respirator on, had rubber gloves, a spray sock, booties, and I had a hood. Because you do, you do not want to get this stuff anywhere on your body that's not covered up. Especially on your arms or in your hair. That would be awful. This is already dry too, this side. I just finished with this about 10 minutes ago and it's already solid. There's a couple of light spots here and there. But I don't think I'm going to get another can or another kit of expanding foam. I think we'll be fine. As long as most of the steel is covered, that's what's important. So... The reason why we're using expanding foam is to mitigate any type of condensation that would occur on the steel on the inside because that will cause rust. And if you use fiberglass or foam board, you could have black mold hiding and you would never even know it. And you'd just be coughing all the time and wouldn't know why. <sighs> but I can already feel the difference in here. It's, it's much cooler already. And the sun is shining. And normally it's pretty warm in here because of the midday sun. Uh-oh. Oops. 
got some in the track. That's all right, it's easy to clean up. So yeah, we're at 132 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And there's what it looks like above the windows. I went really heavy on this side because this was my practice side. So I can kind of play around with the nozzle. So this side's two or three inches thick, which is, which is fine because this is the side the sun's going to be on all winter anyways. And then uh, summertime comes, it'll just be that side and the roof that gets all the sun. Once we get the brackets welded on, we'll get up there and start uh, insulating the roof. I think what I'm going to do on the roof is just some one inch foam board and then fiberglass on top of that. Or I, I might say heck, heck with it and, you know, and I'll get another kit of spray foam and do the roof with it. It might be worth it to do that in the long run, you know. Like I, I mentioned all that stuff about condensation on the steel. I guess that wouldn't make any sense if I didn't spray the metal roof also. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe I'll leave this stuff down on the floor and uh, we'll get get the computer going the next couple days once the charger shows up and then we can cut those brackets out on the CNC machine and then get those welded to the roof and ready for the carport. And then we can insulate the foam, uh, spray foam insulation on the roof. So that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of information. My goodness. Um, oh, uh, I wanted to reply to one of the comments I had on my last video asking if I was going to insulate the floor. Uh, I don't see any reason for that. I live in the desert. Most of the time it's warm out and the ground isn't really that hot. So, and Plus it'll be surrounded with concrete on the outside. But no, I'm not going to take the floor up and put a bunch of insulation down there. Plus the rats would just eat it all and take it away anyway. So that's not going to happen. We are going to leave the original wood floor on, but we're going to cover that up with the uh, OSB or particle board or something. And then we're going to put linoleum over the top of that. And I think that's about that. We did move a couple of things around and added some studs to put a television support bracket and a power outlet that's close to the television if we decide to put one on the wall up there we can do that we change the air conditioner location from over here to over here it's still on its separate power you can see the the power wire it's covered in styrofoam but there it is that's that'll be for the air conditioner with its own individual power and then we took the plugs that were down here under the desk and we moved them up above the windowsill on either side. I guess that makes more sense than having the plugs underneath the desk if you're going to be plugging things into them. You don't want to crawl around under there. Especially if you're big like me. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And then we added some uh, studs along here too for uh, we can hang paintings and artwork or whatever down the road. And then we took that outlet and flipped it around so it's pointed out that way. I'm going to add another one up about here probably that's also facing outward. But I just didn't have enough boxes. So that's as far as we got. So the flies are going crazy right now. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. If you got any, have any questions or comments, pop those down below. Give us a thumbs up. And as always, keep building and try to be good to each other. Some of us aren't here for very long. And a little bit of kindness will go a long ways. So God bless you all and peace.